For any dairy farmer, access to quality feeds for their cows is what determines whether they make a profit or run into losses. Stanley has been a dairy farmer for over five years and knows this all too well. I started farming in 2016 we, and I have been giving my animals Napier glass, sorghum and uh, hay. But hay has been uh, the dominance factor because I could uh, make five hays in a small amount of sorghum and, uh, and I used to give them as a dry matter. And uh, production have not been very good. It went to around animals that now came up uh, was around 2018. So my animals refused at around 18 kgs. And uh, sometimes one could get discouraged. I have four cows. They have been, uh, the, 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 the highest has been at the age of 20. Then the others has been at the age of 16, 15 per day. Over 80% of milk produced in Kenya comes from smallholder farmers. Access to quality feeds has, however, been made worse by effects of unpredictable weather patterns in the wake of climate change, hence innovations within the sector must be explored. Milk production around this area has been low and uh, it has actually been affected so much by season because you find that uh, our farmers are not able to preserve or to conserve their feeds. So when we have drought, milk production goes down. When we have uh, rains, or when the rains are there, you find that milk production is high. So this one you can attribute to our farmers not uh, having good feeding programs and not having good feeding plants. To address the current cow feeding crisis, Performita, a leading dairy advisory company in collaboration with other sector stakeholders, is championing the Cash Cow Initiative to accelerate production of fodder to industrial volumes. Under this model, the fodder producers and other actors in the fodder supply chain are financed to scale up so that dairy farmers are guaranteed availability of quality fodder all year round. The agenda for the sector is production of milk to produce more so that we have enough for the country and also to export milk. But then, farmers, for farmers to produce, they need to make a profit. So it's also about productivity. So Performata is coordinating uh, the private sector, players, uh, public sector, and everybody else who is involved in the whole campaign about productivity and production. For it to happen, it is to move farmers from um, the way they are feeding now, which is basically feeding, they feed based on what they get instead of feeding what a cow requires. So we have to move farmers to, towards feeding rations because we have high genetic animals and what we lack is right feed for them. What has been happening uh, is in the industry is uh, the dairy industry has predominantly been uh, financed uh, uh, on the upper part of the value chain. When I say the upper part, I mean uh, at the point where the farmer milks his cows takes the milk to the cooperatives or processors. That is where most financial institutions intervene. But as Family Bank, we want to be different. We want to start with the farmer from where it matters, the animal nutrition. Because unless we address that, milk production will still remain a mirage. The reason why I say it in this innovative way, we are impacting the farmer, but not directly. We are looking at which is the best touch point that we can touch to reach the masses. In this case, if the cooperative with its affiliate farmers on board into this uh, partnership, then they have access to quality feed, which now they can distribute to the farmers. As a starting point to addressing the feed challenge, the Cash Cow Initiative ran cow feeding trials with farmers from three fodder deficient counties, that is Nyeri, Nyandara and Kambu counties, to demonstrate to farmers that their cows can produce better if they are fed right. So what we had observed in our usual consultancy and advisory activities with farmers is that farmers for a long time have been doing very well on breeding so their cows are well advanced on genetics. But for feeding, they have actually been feeding cows to fill the stomachs of the cow without a lot of um, observance to quality. So farmers actually feed what they get. So cows therefore produce perhaps even half or slightly above half of their potential. So farmers don't make money, even when the price offered by the cooperative is good. 
because the productivity of the cow is very low. So we wanted to sort out that. Can we avail the feeds that the cows need and ensure that the farmers can access them? What we also wanted to demonstrate is that we just pick that cow and show the farmer, look, your cow, which has been giving you 10 liters, can actually give you 20 and you still make a higher profit than you make at 10 liters. And we have been able to demonstrate that. So far we've done three feed trials in three cooperatives and all of them have shown between 50% and 100% increase in your production in three weeks of feeding the right diet to the cow. I, I came to learn about the rations when they performed a group through the Okarao dairies visited me. I was lucky that one of my animals was to be the experiment. And in the due course of them coming because of that experiment or that one day animal, uh, they, 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 they give me quite a number of things that I should be doing to my animals. And I changed what I was doing before. And I wish they even had come earlier. Because we had really, I had really beaten the bush. Now you can see from 52, after the performance, people came and they showed me on how to reduce this, add this. I have been able from 52 to go to 84. So within a span of those a month, I'll be able to add about 30 liters of milk. And that has been great. And I'm continuing. And I'm telling you, when I continue with the kind of education that was given by, by, by the performance group, I'm going to 100. It's not just about mixing feeds, but making sure that they are nutritionally balanced and sufficient intake in line with the cow's weight and production stage. For this to happen, the feed is tested in a feed lab and a total ration is formulated based on the results. When you look at the silage testing, um, we've been receiving silage from different farmers and farmers will be bringing silage at different levels. The main intention of making silage is to be able to preserve the nutrients and therefore uh, we will be looking at the silage that has been brought and compare and do analysis on our side to be able to tell the farmer whether that silage is good or not. For instance, we have this silage uh, that has been well done. You can see uh, the particles have been well uh, chopped off. You can see that uh, it is of uniform quality, uh, uniform sizes. This has been well done and even the preparation of this silage has been well done. Same to this one. If you look at uh, the particles again, well chopped and uh, we have the cobs and the maize uh, stalks and the stovers uh, all over well distributed and this uh, gives us a very easy moment when we move to the next step of analysis or the preparation step and then the analysis. Uh, but we still have some silage that will come in and does it meet that uh, quality criteria and if you look at this silage uh, still shows that there's something to be done at the farm level uh, to be able to make it uh, of the same characteristic like what we've just seen here. So if you look at this, uh, you can see that we have some particles that are already decomposing and this doesn't make a good uh, silage uh, even to move to the next step. And in this case, we we'll advise the farmer uh, that they need to do something before we even test the silage. At Crop Nuts, uh, we are looking at the nutritional levels uh, of the silage. And uh, when we talk about nutritional levels, we are looking at things like energy, the carbohydrates, the starch, the fibers, uh, the, the moisture content and all that. That is what we call the nutritional composition of the feed. And that is what you look at. The silage is then packaged in portable airtight packages which ensures that the quality is preserved and also making it easy for farmers to plan for their feeds so that they can place their orders on time for any fodder beyond what their farms can produce. We have made it accessible for farmers. Uh, they can make orders through the cooperatives, the dairy cooperatives, uh, where they have been registered and uh, through the agrovets around them together with a new app that we have in Play Store called Cash Cow App. So for a dairy farmer, uh, if they want to access or buy uh, the fodder, they can download the app and then they can fill a form that is quite easy uh, with the, their location, uh, how much they need and uh, it will be accessed to them. To scale up adoption, dairy cooperatives in Kenya are a great resource in reaching more farmers. Kashkau is currently reaching 45,000 farmers through seven cooperatives already onboarded and has contracted 1,300 acres of fodder for the next season, which begins in 2022. The issue of feeding here in Nyandarwa that has been the biggest challenge is that most farmers feed from natural pastures. But with the programs that we have with Kashkau and Performeta, ours is to be able to get the silage cheaply 
using the economies of scale so that we can be able to bring it closer to the farmers where farmers can be able to access using our agrovets that are distributed within our catchment. The total fodder deficit is quantified and experienced commercial fodder producers contracted to produce. The bank then finances all the production processes from seeds, fertilizers, machinery, harvesting to ensure that the projected volumes are achieved. The forward contracts specify the quality parameters that the fodder must meet and prices to safeguard all the actors from losses. Yellow Farms produces May silage with our target market being uh, small scale farmers to large scale farmers. We learn about cash cow initiative through Performator when we are looking to expand our current silage production. We do over 300 acres of silage and um, cash cow initiative helps us to get to know about family bank funding which really helps us to, do, to, to acquire farm inputs and uh, doing the whole process up to the harvesting stage. Through access to these funds we are able to acquire all the farm inputs from production stage to baling and compacting of silage and uh, this guarantees uh, to our farmers that we can do we can provide quality silage that uh, their livestock requires. With our plan increase from 300 acres to 400 acres we are envision that in future we'll be able to lease more land Thereby, we will appreciate if the government comes in to issue some of the idle lands that they have because uh, if I compare leasing of private farms with the uh, government, it will be cheaper and with this we will be able to save on our cash flow and we will be able to save on our cost of our operations and uh, we will be able to pass some of these benefits to some of our small scale farmers and uh, we will be able to do much volumes. When it comes to contracting, we identify qualified and experienced uh, maize growers. Uh, we discuss with them on the aspect of price, volumes, and timelines. And we also discuss the issue of quality. And so for the year 2022, we are looking at upwards of 1,000 acres. That will give us about uh, 12,000 tons for maize silage. And this volume will assure farmers that uh, when they sign in, they will be getting all year round supply for maize silage. With the increasing local demand for milk and milk products and possible opportunities for export, farmers like Stanley are well positioned for such opportunities as long as all year round access to good quality fodder is guaranteed. With increased production per cow, the feeding cost per litre will be more competitive, farms will register positive growth and the sector will be more competitive too. But what needs to happen for this initiative to be successfully sustainable? For this to work, is that the outsourcing system has to work. Now that outsourcing system can only be done through the cooperatives. So again, we want to we work with cooperatives. We capacity build them to, 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 to ensure that they help plan for the farmer and then outsource because at a cooperative level, you have enough uh, economies of scale, for example, to go and look for a large scale farm and produce fodder at scale. When you produce it at scale, you get it at uh, the quality is right you're able to use machines, the cost is also much lower. So, so with that, you actually unlock the wealth at, at farm level. So that's important. So, but because you want to produce it at scale, what else is important? You have to get that land and you have to lease it. So again, we are working with, well, Cash Cow is working with government to, to be able to release some of the idle tracts of land to produce fodder, but we're also working with large-scale farmers with machinery and other things. So that's important. So that industry, the fodder industry itself, has to work. So uh, besides land, of course, then it becomes capital intensive when you're talk, talking large-scale production of fodder, because again, you use, use machinery. Now that those machines, again, you have to then get the money to buy them. So again, financing has to be there, and it has to be the right financing, which, which uh, you know, typically for you to buy machines and whatnot, 10 years plus, and the interest has to be right. So again, working with banks to ensure that uh, there's not just financing, but appropriate financing, which is appropriately uh, cost uh, uh, priced. So that's critical. So, so again, you, you realize now we've gone to technology providers, machinery, uh, right machines, so working with the likes of John Deere uh, and others. Uh, we are also then looking at uh, seeds, 
right seeds is important, not, not every seed can work. So you need the right seeds to get the right forage, uh, to get the right uh, nutrition. So, so that's important. So there's the whole ecosystem from seeds to fertilizer, to, to, to machinery, uh, to finance that, that needs to work. So in other words, for dairy to work, agriculture has to work. As Cash Cow endeavors to continue engaging value chain actors towards restoring competitiveness in the Kenyan dairy sector, the feed trials have proven that it is possible to turn around fortunes for farmers. For more information about Cash Cow, you can reach us via the contacts on your screen.